Now, this object, what I'm going to be doing is I'm going to be using a few methods that I was using previously, uh, you know, the different projection methods. Uh, maybe I'll be use the unwrap tool, maybe the, uh, you know, UV projection tool. And what I want to illustrate with this example is that it really doesn't matter how I go about, you know, getting my result as long as the final result is readable, um, easy to work with in a 2D method, and it gives me enough flat areas so that if I ever paint in 3D, I have enough texture map to dedicate to that object where, you know, I have enough more, and I mean, it has to be flat, it has to be, I have to get enough room on a texture to get a good result uh, in the end. So how I get there really doesn't matter. So let's just say, for example, I'm actually going to UV this object uh, two times. And what I'm going to start by doing is I'm going to be using the UV projection tool. I'm going to change this to Atlas. And I'm just going to very quickly get a result like this. Not bad. Very fast. Um, and the result is actually pretty good. So UV test. I'm once again going to ch use my... I'm going to select the UV test map, image map, UV grid. And of course I don't see my object because it's been deselected. And uh, here we go. So, this isn't bad. Very quick. But of course, you know, we have some points that I'm not exactly liking. One of which is this. Now, the reason why this happened is because the Atlas mapping, the way it likes to work, is that it will map from a few different uh, views. One of which is the front and back. So, if I, for example, scale these UVs up, what you'll notice is that, uh, you know, this is more or less square. It's not, not perfect. But if I was to do this, you know, I'd get... You know, I'd get, start getting closer to square. That's not bad. Now, of course, what happens here? Well, same thing. If I go to here, you know, you look at these EVs, and what happened is the way this application did the cuts is by views. So it selects this more or less again, and it makes a cut. It goes from top, makes a cut. So it's it basically separates my object into a number of pieces. Well, the one positive thing about this, of course, is that I can use this to my advantage. What if, you know, I just do that? Or, you know, I like, let's just say I delete this uh, texture map here. And I want to be really quick about doing my uh, texturing. And I have an object where I know that I have definite, uh, you know, planes like this. And I have a front, and I have a back. Well, what I can do is I can just use the UV uh, projection tool, map it very quickly like this. You know, do this, uh, assign a texture map. And now what I could do is, of course, I could cut that piece off. I'm going to go back into my I-beam. Now, now, of course, it's missing the caps. That is perfectly fine. What I'm going to do next is I'm just going to select, much like I did previously with the cube, I am going to select one of these edges here. And I think I might have selected something wrong, but that's okay. Uh, when I did my cut previously for these objects here. Anyways, I selected one line right, right across. I'm going to go to unwrap. I have one unwrap all the way through. So what I did here, really, um, because now if I look at this object here, you'll notice that everything is nice and cute or square. It's a much, it's a much nicer result than we had previously. Now the way I worked this way for this object in particular is, again, if I try to find this and just vertex merge. My object is pretty much finished. I mean, I just pack UVs, get rid of Orient, 50%, and I'm uh, kind of done. Now, what did I do? Well, what I did is I used the UV projection tool initially 
to use the atlas mode to break up the object for me automatically. So I could choose the back and the front. I could extract that out. And then I knew for a fact that I was going to get this piece all on its own, which made it easier for me to, of course, make the cut along this way by choosing this edge. Once I made this cut, I was able to unwrap this object all the way around this shape without, of course, having to worry about this. And that's pretty much all I did, really. Now, what you also noticed is that I actually cut away these pieces altogether because the way the unwrap tool works is it likes to work on the entirety of a model and not in pieces. So if I, for example, click on this object here, I, I, I select these polygons and then I click unwrap, what it will do is it will work only on the polygons that I selected. Well, that doesn't quite work when I select edges, because if I select edges right now, and I just select this edge loop here, and I hit unwrap, well, the result is not so nice. Why? Because what I've, what I've specified for Moto to do is to cut along here, but there's also all these edges that are connected, so it can't really unwrap this if this isn't cut as well. Of course, one way around that is to select all these edges here, all the way around. Or even easier, select this edge here inside. You'll notice that all of it is selected. Do the same thing on the other end, like this. Select select that, select this like that, and now you just have to deselect these small corners here, should they be here, and really they're only going to appear on this edge loop here, so I just deselect that, and now I hit unwrap, and I get pretty much the same result that I did previously, except all I really did was I just selected a few edge loops. Now this might not be ideal when your object is a little bit more complicated than this one, but for the most part it works. Now if you ever find yourself, you know, being in, again, the situation where you can't rotate this object where it's perfectly aligned this way, you know, sometimes you can try to use orient pieces, sometimes it'll work, and in this case it, uh, I'm not sure if it exactly did its job, but it looks like it did. Again, you can just select this, orient pieces, you know, it'll try its best. You can specify, you know, which direction you want, perpendicular, whatever. But again, it's, it doesn't always work. So sometimes you actually have to do things by hand. And that's perfectly okay. Again, what you really want to do is you want to look at your result here to make sure that, uh, you know, that you got the proper mapping. But yeah, I mean, if you've noticed, is I took multiple ways to arrive at the pretty much the same result. Now, again, some people might want to keep these things together along with this one. So considering this object is, in fact, together, what I can do is I can select these edges. I can find out where this object is actually physically connected to there. So I'm just going to take these disconnected UVs, and I'm going to try to merge them together. Now you'll notice that this edge is in fact smaller than this one here. So all I'm going to do is I'm just going to zoom in, move this closer to there. It doesn't have to be too perfect, but you know, the closer the better. I'm going to hit R to rotate or scale that button right there. Click one point here because I'm going to be scaling from that point. Navigate all the way up here because what I want to do is I want to see how close I am aligned to that point. I'm going to now hit equal and I'm going to scale until I reach as close as possible. I'm going to zoom in a little bit closer, hit control or actually hit equal first, hit control and on the slider again and I'm going to get a little bit more accurate with that 
And now the next thing I want to do is I want to rotate from the same point as here. So I'm just going to click on rotate. If the rotate tool doesn't appear, you have to go back in, zoom in, click over there, make your way over here and try to see how close you are as far as the rotation goes. Again, I'm holding control like that and I get a fairly close align. And now that I selected these two edges, I have two options. I can right click, sew, average, or I can go to move and sew with options, sew, and then, you know, same option there. And of course, this way, what I get is a nice seamless transition here, right across this polygon. Now, if this object is going to be seen from the top like this, you probably might have wanted to, instead of, uh, you know, connect this, you might have wanted to connect the object up here, from here, because that is where it's mostly going to be seen from. So you want to make sure you get rid of one seam across the, you know, axis or, or across the plane where you're actually seeing or from the viewpoint. And again, you could do the same thing with this here. So the next thing to do is, of course, just again, pack EVs and, uh, and you're good. Now, in these cases, sometimes you have to think about, you know, what it is that you want to do with your painting. Because again, if I were to connect this to the other end over here, well then what's going to happen is, when I pack, all of a sudden, this will shrink. Because I'm going to need now room for this on this end. So what happens? Well, all of a sudden I lost all this room for this end of the texture. In fact, the entire texture actually lost a bunch of room because I'm losing room vertically and horizontally versus I could have had something like this. In fact, better yet, I could have had something like this. Even more room used as far as the texture goes. And all I really had to do is just disconnect this piece and that piece. So sometimes you really have to think about what it is that you need to do. Again, what I'm going to do is I'm just going to, you know, just do something like that. Tear off like that, pack. And again, this part is now using a much greater amount of the texture. So anyways, that object is done. Let's move on to the cup.